What's up, guys? It's the Faruqi Brothers back with another video. And today for you guys, we're going to be talking about the latest information on the next Superman reboot. So an article dropped in The Hollywood Reporter this week that gave more details on the ta Coates Superman movie that's been development. Now, last time we talked about it, we talked about how Coates is reimagining Superman. Uh, it was going was to be a reboot. We knew it was going to be outside of the DCEU. So this article confirms a lot of the stuff we've told you about, stuff that we've already heard, but also sheds new details on the kind of Superman they're looking for. And the four of us are going to break it down, and then we're going to debate about, is this the right move? Are they going the wrong direction? We'll do all of that. So let's kick right into it. I'm going to actually share my screen so we can uh, so we can go through the article fairly quickly, and then we'll do our quick debate about it. So let me just share it. All right. So this article um, goes through a bunch of stuff, but the main thing is uh, it feels like kind of a closing linchpin to the Zack Snyder universe, and it's kind of like here's what's coming next, and here's what the next future of DC will look like, right? So it starts with uh, some of the basic stuff. Number one, Michael B. Jordan, just the week before this article, confirmed that he is not involved in this next Superman movie, and he's not even interested in being Superman. So I know he was a lot of people's fan cast, to take over the role, but in this interview, now he didn't do a THR, but uh, in this interview, he basically said, listen, I'm just going to be watching this one. So that's just one thing to get, get out of the way right now. I know, Samir, you've been actually saying Michael B. Jordan a few times now uh, as a potential Superman, but uh, looks like as of right now, he won't be the guy who's putting on the cape uh, uh, for Superman. So we start the article very quickly. It confirms that, yes, J.J. Abrams is producing it. We've always heard, we've talked about it actually a few years now, that J.J. was... On the cuff, he kind of wanted to direct the Superman movie. Uh, definitely Warner Brothers wanted him to do something with Superman. In the end of the day, it seems like J.J., instead of doing a Superman movie, he's just okay with producing one. And he's going to be producing this alongside uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' script, right? So uh, they even went as far to say that um, one source added that putting Abrams at the director's chair would be tone deaf, right? Which I would probably agree if you're doing a, a movie about a black Superman, then maybe you don't want to get someone like J.J., uh, uh, running the ship there. You want to get another director, someone who's preferably uh, a director of color. So a few things. This First thing this does is talk about directors because now we want to see whose vision is really running this thing, right? So Warner Brothers apparently will be speaking to a bunch of high uh, profile black directors, uh, including uh, Stephen Capel Jr., J.D. Dillard, Regina King, who just won uh, an Oscar, uh, Shaka King, who did uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, which all four of us called one of the best films of 2021. Um, even uh, Ryan Coogler was, is someone they're thinking about, even though at the moment he's going to be doing Black Panther 2 and probably more with Marvel. Uh, so a bunch of stuff there. But the, So we can stop here and talk about directors, right? And one thing important to note is that Coates isn't expected to deliver his Superman script until mid-December. So he's still writing the script. He's still figuring this thing out. Um, and Marvel actually is interested in the exact same director names for Blade, right? Which which stars Mahershala Ali, right? So a bunch of stuff going there. So let's just um, let's let's talk about the director stuff for now. I mean, we know very few directors have really kind of had their hand with Superman uh, over the last, I mean, for, since forever. You can really count them on your hand. It's uh, Richard jo Richard Donner, uh, Brian Singer, and Zack Snyder, right? And then for a brief moment, you had Joss Whedon. So uh, this is a chance for someone new to take over. Uh, the names, obviously, all the names here are pretty good. But Zian, I'll start with you. If you had a choice for who you'd want to direct the next Superman movie, the Superman reboot, who would you choose? Would it be one of these names here or someone to be outside the list? I mean, from the names here, obviously, they're all amazing directors in their own right and amazing creatives. I feel like, though it's like the more obvious choice, because we've seen what he's, what he's done in a superhero capacity, I feel like Ryan Kulu would honestly be the best person for um, taking the helm to handle this Superman film, a black Superman. So, um, but obviously with his own prior commitments with Marvel, that's probably, that seems like it'll be more of the... The tougher option to get for DC, but in like a perfect world, I feel like just based on how he did Black Panther, the type of film he made with a black superhero in the lead, I feel like he'd be the perfect guy to handle a black superhero only because he's been there, he has that experience, he knows what it's like to handle a super, a uh, major superhero film. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, I would also think that Ryan Coogler is an interesting uh, choice, though. Actually, he's not my first choice. Honestly, after watching Judas and the Black Messiah, I'd want to give Shaka King a chance uh, to try out this movie. Obviously, it's a very big budget movie, uh, probably the biggest movie in his career thus far. But I think it'd be interesting for him to kind of... Uh, give his take uh and the article mentioned that actually that's right now he warner brothers is very high on him right now like they love what he did with judas the black messiah and they want to give him a big project maybe not superman but definitely they're gonna talk to him about it so whether or not he does superman or something else you you can uh, be pretty confident he's gonna be doing something with dc i mean uh, if he doesn't do superman i would love him to try static shock uh, or something with Green Lantern, if it's doing John Stewart. Uh, but honestly, Superman feels like a very interesting, um, interesting concept to take with uh, this uh, this director, who's done very uh, like profound storytelling. He knows what he's doing uh, with a character like this. I mean, Samir, where do you stand on the director's chair? Do you have do you side Mayor Mears? Or do you have your own choice that you think it would work for this? I mean, with, with the list of directors there, I think I think if they land any of them, uh, it'd be it'd be a good good move going forward. Um, I think I'm with Zian, though. Uh, Ryan Coogler, I think, would be the way to go. Um, just by the way he handled he handled Black Panther so well. Um, I think, yeah, I think Ryan Coogler would be my, my first choice. And Umar, what about you? I mean, do you stand with Zian and Samir here? Do you stand with me? Do you have a third option? Where, where, where are you sitting on this one? You're muted, by the way. <laughs> I'm with you on this one. I think that uh, I, I'd love to see someone new kind of handle... Uh, because we've seen Ryan Coogler's kind of take when it comes to, um, you have a rough idea of kind of what he's going to do. So you're uh, thinking Shaka what, King on this one? Yeah, I'd love to see someone. And I'd love to see a story that's a bit, uh, you know, um, like I, I, I would personally, like I, would, I, would, I wouldn't want to see, uh, like I wouldn't really care too much of a story where there isn't a depth to it. Um, and I think that uh, Ryan Coogler definitely brings that type of direction he did it with black panther so it's not a it's not a knock of, co of course uh against him but i just think that because uh it goes back to the experience aspect i just think like um with the with the movies that we've seen from uh shaka king am i saying the name right yeah uh yeah i think that uh the it just goes back to what you're saying like just there's a profoundness to the way he uh, the, also, it's with the stories that he's done, so it's not just about like I'm sure Ryan Coogler, if he was given a chance to do something like that, he would give us the same thing. Um, but I would just like to see someone new in the space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, um, I agree with that. I think someone new is the way to go. And you mentioned the word depth, which is the key because if you're doing a black Superman movie, uh, if you don't want it to feel performative, you have to go all the way, and you got to tell a really strong story, right? And you got to have the story and the characters and the themes be at the heart of what this movie would be. Because if you're telling a by-the-number Superman story and just the Superman happens to be black, then you're, you're, it's not going to feel the same. If you're doing a black Superman movie, then take that um, farther than even how they approached Sam Wilson becoming Captain America. And they had like, they touched on a little bit of oh, what does it mean for a black man to be Captain America? What are you talking about? What's, a black, what's it like to be a black man? What's it like for a black man to be Superman? That's actually I mean, a bigger um, conversation. Maybe not in the story plot, but in the outside world, because how what Superman means to American pop culture, and we all we already know America's has a very divisive um, and really let's call it what it is a racist history. So putting those two things together uh, is the key, and we're gonna get to that in the story because, uh, and we'll probably get to it in a, a, a naturally. But one point was that um, what the Hollywood Reporter is hearing is this movie won't take place in the present. It's going to be a 20th century period piece, right? So we're talking like 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, civil rights era, maybe even before that, World War II, maybe in that area where the KKK is happening. We know there was a fantastic book uh, from uh, Gene Yang, who we actually uh, interviewed uh, on the channel, uh, called Superman Smashes the Clan, which is also a period piece comic book where Superman is literally fighting the KKK. Now, might might be too on the nose to put like a black superhero in that in that scenario. I don't know. That's more something that someone with the writing prowess of a Tanahasi Coates can figure out. But that's some of the ideas that pop in mind that you want to tell a story like this. Well, you can do that. So let's move to actor now because uh, like we like we talked about in the beginning, Michael B. Jordan is not expected to be Superman for this movie. So. They said that Superman will likely land with the name director, but the star will be relatively unknown. So big director, unknown name. And they mentioned that, listen, Brandon Routh was unknown. Henry Cavill was unknown. And even Chris Reeve to some degree was unknown when, when, when they took their role. So unlike 
unlike Batman, who they always pick an A-lister, always, right? An A-lister plays Batman. For Superman, they're okay with someone being a new actor who has the face, but not necessarily the acting chops to to play him. So uh, expect even if they so a lot of people are picking like the most popular black actors in Hollywood, saying he could be Superman, he could be Superman. But in reality, it might end up being someone we've never heard of before, but has the face, right? So uh, that's something to think about as as we kind of go through this article, right? And then we talk about the DC's future and, and, and the DCEU as a whole, which obviously has its fair share of controversy. But um, they mentioned, they said in the so-called Snyderverse is over, uh, but the only people that will remain from that universe is going to be Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, uh, and Ezra Miller. So only three people are kind of sticking uh, sticking along with the old regime, with the new regime, rather, uh, especially with Flash kind of uh, rebooting things. Uh, but... This is an interesting point. It's the next point that we can talk about. Uh, they said, so far, every movie and TV show, with the exception of Matt Reeves' The Batman, uh, HBO Max spinoff Gotham PD, and Joker's planned sequel will take place in the same universe. So uh, basically, this is saying that, listen up, Superman, Batman, Joker's, and Joker 2, and the Batman like spin-off TV show are not part of the DCEU, which I think also means not part of the DCEU multiverse. Like I think it's not part of like if the Flash is destroying the multiverse, getting Michael Keaton Batman out uh, from one side and doing all these different things, I would doubt any Robert Pattinson showing up. I would doubt anything to do with this Superman showing up. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? So yeah, I'm gonna circle back to you, like. Do you feel like, hey, for, let's stick to Superman, really, because we know Batman not being part of the universe is probably a good thing, which we've discussed many times. But for this Superman movie, are you happy to know that, at least by his report, this movie won't be a DCEU movie, and it won't be connected to what they're doing with that big storyline? It's honestly the best possible scenario for this film, in my opinion, because it gives the film, gives the writers, gives the directors that freedom they need to really go all out and make the story they want to make and not being barred down by oh you can't do this you can't do that or you want to fit into this later or add this little easter egg here it's like that just all comes in and kind of convolutes the whole thing but now um the same reason why i'm very excited for the batman it's like matt reeves it's his singular vision it's not being altered or changed just to fit into this wider dc universe that's what i'm that and so for superman it's the same situation if uh the writers the directors they can make their singular vision without having to be barred down or altered just to fit into this wider universe or change it anyway. So they can go all out. They can do whatever story they feel is right for this black Superman and um, tell it the, the way they want it to with little to no interference um, from the studio. Omar, I'm going to give you that same question because you also, um, actually you probably more than the four of us, you think about like the universe trajectory, where things are going, how the pieces are fitting. But again, this Superman movie featuring a black Superman will not be, according to these reports, part of the DCEU or even the multiverse. It's going to stand completely separate like the Joker, like the Batman. Do you agree with that? Like Zion agrees with that? Or do you feel like, hey, if Henry Cowell is already kind of being pushed out, why don't you bring the Superman in the universe? Where do you stand on that debate? Well, I think so. There's three things I would say. So one, I think that um, I do like this, uh, Zion's point about how um, it would be amazing to just not have to think about like the bigger universe while you're making these solos, um, as my nephew disagrees with me in the background. Um, at the same time, I think that the uh, I, I think that one small point to be very aware of is that um, just because uh, these are away from like the the DCEU or the DC multiverse, it actually doesn't necessitate that um, the studio won't interfere. So that's something that's something to just have in the background that they can still interfere and mess up the movies if they want to, like they have in the past. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is from a story standpoint, I do think that it is kind of weird that if you only have Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash really coming back, right? Um, everyone else is either a recast or whatever it would yeah like it, you have room to work with right and because the flash and because the story aspect of a flash break in the multiverse and whatnot you technically still would be able to make the solos as you want them and then later you could well, bring them in and rewrite everything so i think there is a way you could bring everything together but it's so confusing that you do have to look at it as a studio if the general audience can take something like that and um, I know that this is where there could be disagreement on 
amongst us, but I do think that the general audience isn't stupid anymore. Like the Marvels are Marvel Universe is already doing a multiverse thing and they they're gonna be introducing something like that. Um I do think that people would people could get get with the program. It's, it just depends on the vision being good or not. Charles, are you muted? Are you, are you muted? All right, yeah. Uh, I was going to say that I agree with Zion on this one, uh, that it's probably better off that it's going separate, only because the DCEU, I don't know, it's not It's not looking like it's like has a clear vision. I mean, in theory, you could have used The Flash to bring a new Superman in, but I think what they're doing with the DCEU is that they're going to use Supergirl as the prototype for Superman, and she's going to just take over. And then for Batman, I mean, there are some like rumors that maybe Ben Affleck wants to stick around, but... I think Ben Affleck's like final Batman movie will be The Flash, um, and then they're gonna write him off, and then we're gonna see Michael Keaton uh, kind of just take over the role from there and Batgirl to some degree. While Matt Reeves does his trilogy with Batman solo, and then whoever gets whoever picks up the reins of Superman will do that solo. But then on that note, Samir, do you think that there's actually potential on the Matt Reeves side? Like, do you feel like this Superman movie should be completely unconnected or? should actually connect with Matt Reeves. Because J.J. and Matt Reeves are actually pretty good friends. I mean, theoretically, if they worked in the background, they're like, hey, you keep building this Batman, let me build my Superman, and then we'll see what we can do in the future. Do you think that's a good idea, or do you think, now, like Joker, keep everything completely separate? I, th I think there's potential there, but everything is already separate, so I think they might go separate. It's still kind of confusing to see uh, how Warner Brothers is trying to go with this, with their DC characters. I mean... Even though Joker is great and Batman looks great and this has a lot of potential, it's like it's it's all it's it's all on its own and it's all like different from the DCEU. So it's it's still confusing as a whole. Yeah, and there's one more anecdote as we kind of wrap up this article, uh, and it kind of slipped in there, so we can discuss like what the merit of it is. But Joker and its planned sequel. Right, Joker and its planned sequel. We haven't heard much about Joker's sequel ever since the the film won an Oscar as uh, the whole screen glitched. Okay, as as the film won an Oscar, we haven't heard much about Joker's sequel. So, Zian, I mean, we can do some quick lightning round as we wrap up fairly quickly. Is it a good first? Number one, do you want to see a Joker sequel? Um, and number two, like, oh, it's all one question. Is it even a good idea? Like, do you want to see a sequel to this movie? Eve, let's say given, and this is the given. The given is. Joaquin Phoenix wants to do it. Todd Phillips wants to do it. So they're interested. Do you want to see it? I mean, if they themselves come out from Ford, say, all right, we have a story, we're interested, then of course I'll be interested as well. But um, in my opinion, I feel like it's best to just leave it as a one-off amazing film that clearly did amazing in the box office. But it's funny to see because Warner was, was shooting this film down and selling it off to investors and trying to destroy it before it even came out. And now they're pushing for a sequel, I feel like um, it's just the wrong move, wrong way to go. Keep that as a one-off, accept it for what it was, the amazing film, as a singular vision film, and just like look towards other things. Omar, where do you stand on this? Uh, I, agree. I agree with Dion. I think that, um, like we talked about before, I think it's actually the greatest technical comic book film of all time. Um, so definitely, I, I, I'm in. I'm in agreement with with Jan that I think maybe you just leave it as a masterpiece and not mess with it. Um, at the same time, there's a curiosity aspect which I'm sure that Jan agrees with as well, which is that what does that look like? And if Todd Phillips himself comes out and, and Walking Phoenix themselves, like they themselves without pressure, come out and like, yo, we have an idea for a story that we could possibly do. Here's what it looks like, and then they pitch it, and then you know things go well from that point onwards. Um, of course, why wouldn't you be excited for something like that? Um, as far as it being connected or being in the same universe, uh, nah. Samir, what about you? Uh, I agree with Jan that that it should just stay on its own um, as as a great movie. And uh, I think I think I think if they take the sequel like uh, the wrong way, it could kind of hurt the first movie. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I'd rather it just stay on its own that's what i'm worried about too like you know like you don't want to ruin the legacy of another movie by releasing 
uh, a movie that's half of its greatness. And 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 we always talk about Joaquin Phoenix's performance and what he has to offer. So I'm not questioning his like brilliance as an actor, but for me, some of the be- his best work at Joker was that middle stage where he was not Joker yet and he was still transforming from Arthur Fleck into Joker. So that middle stage was why he won an Oscar, you know, like that bathroom um, scene, right? So you don't if you're doing another movie, right? It's a sequel. He's going to be Joker now, right? So what can you do with that movie? Are you building on a Batman? Is he going to be meeting Bruce Wayne or is he fighting someone else? Like what exactly the storyline here, which I feel like the first movie kind of covers in a way that you don't need a sequel. But then again, if they have an idea, because Walking Phoenix is the kind of actor who never does sequels. So if he's down for a sequel, that'd be very interesting. But I still, I'm not 100% sure if I even buy this story completely. Like it was just added in there. I don't know if it was something that Warner Brothers wanted in there, if the reporter was kind of just kind of just uh, spitballing there and just threw what threw something extra sentence in because it feels kind of. I, I feel like it. knowing the track record of what Warner Brothers announces to what actually gets released is never going to happen. They're just throwing it out just to show that oh. We know what we're doing. We have ideas, but really just give me another idea that just falls through. Right. And I think yeah, so that's that's basically the end of, of this um the end of this article. So there's a bunch talked about. Uh the last thing, we can go really quick, the last point I want to make with the four of us is the black Superman, right? Big thing. You're putting a black man in the Superman costume. Uh, and obviously, it's going to get a lot of hate. It's going to get a lot of controversy. People are going to be feeling some type of way about it. But a point that this article made sure to note is that the Superman that they with ta Coates is trying to write is Kal-El. And he wants to tell a story of Kal-El coming from Krypton to Earth. So it's an origin story. So the redo, the, it literally is a reboot. Uh, in the way reboots are. They're retelling the story of Superman, but they specifically did not say Clark Kent. They said Kel-El. So now there's only two Kel-Els with different names, and that's um, Calvin Ellis. Did I get the name right? Or am I getting that wrong? Right, Earth-23 Superman, and then Clark Kent, right? So they can make Clark Kent like into a black actor, like a black Clark Kent, or they can... They're not really telling. They're not showing their entire hand, and they're planning to a different Superman. So this is obviously a weighted topic, but let's try to do it as fast as we can. Uh, if we're doing a black Superman, do you prefer that we're talking about Cal El and Clark Kent being reimagined in this 20th century period piece, singular Superman vision, or would you rather see them try something like Val Zod or Calvin Ellis try a different Superman that's already a black Superman and? build that story out. So where do we stand on this one? Uh, Zian, why don't you go quick and give me like your 30 second version of it. Um, For me, I think Calvin Ellis is absolutely the way to go and not go to Clark Kent because though, yes, he's going to be a black version of Clark Kent. It's still the same through line of the character. You know, it's like you have to hit the same beats and the same notes that Clark Kent went through, but then you also add that racial aspect of it, which adds its own nuances, of course, and its own, different um troubles for the character but it's just it just feels like it's old territory and though even though it's a black actor playing the same character i feel like clark kent is not the way to go because we just know the story of clark kent so well and even though it'll be changed the race will be different it won't be the story really can't be that much different than what clark kent usually goes through so calvin ellis in my opinion is the best way to go for this character what about you, Omar? Where do you kind of stand on this one? Are you with Zion? Or are you thinking your own opinion? Um, I think they should break all the rules, to be honest. So I think regardless of what which way they go, I think they need to make it different than the story that we do all know. And I think that could be done, of course, um, going the, the non-Clark Kent route, that makes it easier. But at the same time, I think even if they did go the Clark Kent route, um, don't hit the same story beats. Do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? So... I would say, like, regardless of who they choose, the one thing I'm very interested in seeing is um, a Superman that is not the, the 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 one we know. I would rather see him totally different, different story beats, different personality, different everything. That's that's kind of, I just think it would be, a, a, and honestly, I think that if you do go too similar to what we have already seen, even if you change from Clark Kent to Calvin Harris, if I'm saying, I don't know if I'm saying the right. Calvin name. Ellis, yeah. Calvin Ellis, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think even then, um, you do need to be very mindful of the fact that you don't want this movie to feel kind of like just 
going through the motions. Like you, you want it to feel very different. You want to go all the way different as much as you can. Um, and you want to come out and like represent properly. You don't want to, you don't want to trip. So I would say that's, that's kind of my, that's cause I, that's, that's what I would want. Break all the rules. Samir, for at least three years now, you've been probably first at this from all of us. You've been saying that Val Zod is the character that should be bringing on screen. Do you still feel comfortable with that? Hey, I want to see Val Zod on screen. Uh, or do you want to see someone like Calvin Ellis? Or do you want to see the real Cal L but turned into a, like a black reinterpretation? So where do you stand on that? I mean, I, I would have preferred Val Zod, but if they're going the Black Superman route, I, I'd prefer Calvin Ellis instead of Clark Kent. I don't rather not be oh it's Clark Kent but he's black this time I'd rather since they already have you know the black Superman characters I think they could uh, really uh, do the Calvin Ellis stories yeah I, I actually agree with Samir there I think Calvin Ellis is probably the smartest way that way he's still Kel L is just a reimagining of Kel L and it's put into a new new um a uh, new perspective, a new lens. The only way that I feel like the Clark Kent aspect could work is if they truly dive in on the period piece aspect. Like you're putting this in the past, you're putting this in uh, a, a stage of America that's extremely racist. So you're you're making a decision that you're picking this black superhero, you're reimagining Superman, but you're putting him in a world that will hate him, right? And that's like taking it 10 steps farther than even what like Zach was doing with Superman in a modern setting. But you put a black Superman pre-civil rights movement and you throw them in there, you're telling a very, very um, specific story. And again, I'm bringing up Gene Yang's comic book we interviewed uh, last year because Superman smashes the client, even though Superman is white in that comic. Uh, there's a reason it won so many awards is because it was a very powerful story. But it, and then that's where this touched more on the immigrant aspect that here's an immigrant Superman in a time where the KKK is doing what they're doing, how does Superman respond? And then they did a great job with it. Now, if you're taking some of that, and Tom Nancy Coates is a great writer. If he looks at that, thinks of different ways to bring a story in and he creates a Clark Kent of that time period, which is very like uh, done with done with a lot of heart and done with uh, a lot of focus. And then you have a really strong director like a Regina King uh, in there. You're talking about a good movie. Like you're talking about something that could be goaded in, in, in a sense. So, but easier said than done. Like Umar said, we cannot just assume that the studio is going to let it happen. Uh, they might want a very safe movie. So we got to watch the production of this movie very carefully to see how things go. But I think all four of us are in basic agreement that if as long as all the tools um, work and then no one's interfering, there is potential for the Superman movie to do something. I think we're in agreement there. But again, remains to be seen if the studio is going to let it happen. What do you guys think about this news? Let us know your thoughts in the comments from myself, from Zayan, from Umar, and from Samir. We're the Faruqi brothers, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.